What's up everybody, welcome to We Do Tech. So today we're gonna take a look at the latest graphics card, not only from Nvidia, but also from Asus, the ROG Strix 3060. Yes, that is the weird 12 gig card with four gigs or more VRAM than its bigger brother, the 3060 Ti, and even more than the 3080, which again, doesn't make a lot of sense, but we'll get into that. Now, a long, long time ago, not in a galaxy far, far away, Linus made a video talking about how much VRAM you really need and where it is actually used. Uh, the main focus for more VRAM is, of course, being able to handle higher resolution textures, but he also stated uh, that higher end GPUs usually have a more VRAM and uh, that is not always uh, viable for more of the entry level style of cards because the actual GPU uh, chip can't utilize utilize the higher amount of VRAM properly because it's slower. And the thing to bear in mind when you're shopping is that GPU vendors use some common sense when they're deciding how much memory to put on a graphics card. So a high-end GPU that can run your games at ultra settings and your high resolutions isn't gonna come with 512 <coughs> megs of RAM on it. More often than not, it'll have three gigs or four gigs because the GPU actually has enough horsepower to be able to render the image that would require that much VRAM to store it. The chances are though, if you're buying a low-end GPU, sort of the opposite is true. There is no point putting three or four gigs mm -hmm. on it because by the time you're going to try to render that image, it's not going to have enough power to do it anyway. So the main question is, why did Nvidia opt to add more VRAM for the 3060? Again, even more than the 3080 has. At first, we kind of thought that this would be a pretty good card for crypto mining because of the higher amount of VRAM. But then Nvidia just threw a curveball quite recently. And now they actually limited the mining performance by half which is weird. So our question is yet again, why does this card actually have 12 gigs of VRAM? Maybe let me know what you guys think down in the comments below before I get into actually how this card performs and what it might be useful for. But anyway, enough with the ranting, let's go over the rest of the specs. The 3060 has 12 gigs of VRAM again, 3584 CUDA cores, 112 third generation Tensor cores, and 28 second generation RT cores. So on a paper, it's pretty much around a 45% increase compared to the RTX 2060 with the older generation of cores. Now, even though the 3060 does have a more VRAM, it is a slower with a 192-bit memory bus versus the 256-bit memory bus on the TI version. However, memory bandwidth is a more at 15 gigabits per second versus the 14 gigabits a second on the TI version so although you do have more memory it's slightly slower now then for msrp the 3060 should be retailing for around 329 dollars but we have already seen that some of the pre-order prices has skyrocketed more than 50 per cent for the car to actually retail at around 5 hundred dollars which is kind of the same price that the rtx 3070 was at a launch so that's honestly quite a bit ridiculous so you're pretty much paying the price for two models above the card that you actually are getting which doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> but now anyway before we get into the benchmarks let's quickly talk about how insanely good this Strix card looks me and Ron both actually agree that this is currently our favorite design of all the RTX cards are currently on the market the big RGB strip on the side of the card and the newly designed fan shroud makes it just look so great it's elegant but at the same time it looks like a proper gaming card there is no LED lead anywhere and the RGB manages to not be tacky. Even when we switch off the card, it still looks good with its silver and a black fan shroud. The backlight looks like a brushed aluminum with the RGB ROGI logo on the tail end just looking so gorgeous. All the RGB goodness can be controlled through the Armory Crate software. Like all of the other Strix cards, you do get a small switch for the P and Q modes, performance and quiet mode and to finish it off you do get a big air vent for heat to escape from on the right tail end side of the GPU. 
Now speaking about heat, the Streaks design always has some of the basic cooling on our GPUs and the 3060 is a no different with our taste only reaching a max of a 63 degrees under a gaming load, not too bad. Now the reason for the good cooling is all thanks to what ASUS calls an axial take fan design. This loosely translates to a smaller hub that has a longer blade with a barrier ring to increase a downward airflow. The two side fans also spin in a counterclockwise direction with the middle one spinning in a clockwise rotation. This does reduce turbulence and eliminates the unnecessary noise. And just like always, if the car does fall below 50 degrees, the fans will stay off for nice and silent. Something nice to see is that at the rear of the car, there are two PDWM fan connectors. If the fans are connected to these headers, they can be turned with the fan curve based on the CPU or the GPU temperatures. Now in a future update on the Armory Crate software, you will be able to link your CPU and GPU temps to the addressable RGB or a lighting strip as well. So this will be able to display the color temperatures of that certain component. Now for IO, the 3060 Strix is actually very well equipped. It does have a two HDMI 2.1 ports and a three DisplayPort version 1.4 A's. It also has a TDP of 170 watts and a nice a single 8-pin connector, so a 500 watt power supply will be perfect fit for that. But that is it for all of the technical specs and pricing. Let's get into what we're actually here for, the benchmarks, and there's a lot to talk about here. Now just a quick mention is that the drivers that we're using is press release drivers, so possible updates might increase performance, we hope, uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. So the first game up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla and all of the settings were set on a max. So on 1080p we reach an average of 66 FPS which is actually a 24% decrease from the 3060 Ti and at the same amount was true for 1440p as well. But with a 4K, yes, we did test out 4K as well, uh, we did see a decrease of 35%. And I'm already wondering what the 12 gigs of VRAM is actually for. The next up was Rainbow Six Siege. And yet again, the 3060 was a dead loss on our charts, falling way behind with a total average of 30% on a DirectX 11 against the 3060 Ti. Using Vulkan, it did manage to catch up a tiny bit what but it was still uh, lagging behind at 23%. So let's see if the 360 can redeem itself in Far Cry New Dawn. Now 1080p was uh, very close, only being at 20% behind the 3060 Ti, which was our uh, top performer here so far. 4040p in Far Cry was a very close race between the GPUs, well until the 3060 came into play, being a whopping 27% behind the 3060 Ti, which might not sound like too much, but there is only a 13% difference between the 3060 Ti and the 3090 here. And then yet again, another 36% slower than the 3060 Ti in 4K. The extra VRAM does not seem to be doing that much really at this point, so Let's move on to the next game and see if it'll make a difference here. So it's time for our next Assassin's Creed game, Odyssey. And at least this time the gap was not that big as it almost reached 90 FPS on a very high settings in 1080p. On 4040p it was not bad either, only being around 17% behind the 3060 Ti. But yet again 4K was the downfall for the 3060 with yet another 37% performance gap between itself and the 3060 Ti. Now we have seen previously with our 3090 reviews that Horizon Zero Dawn does like a lot of a VRAM so maybe this time the 3060 will conquer them all with its strange amount of a VRAM so uh, let's see 1080p and 4040p it was a 28% behind the 3060 Ti and in 4k a wholesome 34% <laughs> 
I did really think that this would be a game that will do a lot of beta, but of course, I guess not. It's just bad. Okay, so let's see with a fast-paced game like Apex Legends. So in 1080p, it managed to get 198 FPS, which is very good actually, only falling 4% behind the 2080 Super, though not the 3060 Ti, which is still a formidable task, however. Then in 1440p, it did get 139 FPS, which is a possible option for 144 Hz at 1440p gaming if you do lower the settings, but it was also 44% behind the 3060 Ti in both 1440p and 4K. Time for the all new but can it run cyberpunk. So in 1080p we did hit over 60 FPS which was actually quite good. With DLSS on we did get 85 FPS but throw ray tracing on there and it does cut that in half only reaching 44 FPS and then with no help from DLSS it got down to 25 FPS which is just unplayable really. We were certain the 3060 will run 1440p decent enough and we weren't actually wrong here. With normal rasterization tests we got a 41 FPS which isn't too great but slap on DLSS and we got over a 60 FPS which is definitely a playable. But again, I throw ray tracing on there and it does get very laggy, dropping around to 29 FPS. And if you remove the LSS, it drops all the way down to 15 FPS, which is again, unplayable. And also just for the fun of it, we did try to run it in 4K. And but yeah, it's not really an option that you can go for. Now in control running at a 1080p with a DLSS on and off as well as a ray tracing we got an average of about a 20% less than the 3060 Ti. 4040p there was a 30% difference on average and in 4k there was even worse of being at around a 38% behind the 3060 Ti. Wilbinson Younger Blood was our last ray tracing game to test. In 1080p, it was on an average 26% behind the 3060 Ti, but actually beat out the 2080 Super in every test. 4040p was a different story though, falling behind again by a margin of about 30%. 4K was a more or less the same result. The next up was Call of Duty Modern Warfare for a nice fast paced, hopefully high refresh rate game. In 1080p, the 3060 was unfortunately dead and lost again, only reaching 159 FPS. That's a disgusting 42% behind the 3060 Ti. It is also worth mentioning that the 3060 Ti was the top card in the test through actually beating out all of the other 30 series cards as well. In 1440p, the gap didn't seem to close up. It actually got worse, where the difference was now 46% between the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. In 4K, the 3060 came very close to reaching 60 FPS, but it was still lacking behind by a margin of 48%. So from the benchmarks, we can see that the 3060 is kind of a useless card compared to all of the other cards that is actually available. On all of the price details NVIDIA gave, the only cards that they could actually compare it to was the, of course, the RTX 2060, but non-super, and then also a five-year-old card, the GTX 1060, but also no mention on which 1060 it actually was because there was like five different ones. Also, they did state that it does have a 10 times the ray tracing performance compared to the 1060, which doesn't have ray tracing at all, so that's honestly not an achievement to boast about. And not to burst NVIDIA as a bubble, but ray tracing is definitely not a standard yet because they did state that on one of their review guides. So. Yeah, not at all. Okay, but then how does the 3060 actually compare against the five-year-old GTX 1060 6 gig? For the test against the 1066 gig, we did benchmark Apex Legends, Control, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. We also compared their 3D mark scores against each other as well. So first up was Apex Legends, where the 3060 did manage to perform a whopping 160% more than the five-year-old 1066 gig, both being on medium settings. 
Control was a second and in rasterize it says with a medium settings it did beat out the 1060 by 103% and of course because you do get advantage of a DLSS with the 360 we did switch that on and it boosted all the way up to 200% more FPS than the 1060. Then lastly it was Call of Duty Modern Warfare with both of the cards on the low settings the difference was 60%. I guess just that that wasn't enough of a challenge to utilize that 12 gigs of VRAM. And then finally we get to the synthetics. So for 3D Mark's Firestrike we got a graphics score of the 22,267. That's a 65% increase over the 1066 gig. In Time Spy we got a score of 8,441 which is a staggering increase of 85% over the 1060. Anyway so this is pretty much a mining card that can't mine properly or maybe it's a good upgrade from let's say a 1060 but again good luck actually finding one and I would actually be quite angry if I wanted to upgrade from my 1060 and skip the 3070 and wait for a more affordable 3060 and just for it to turn out to be actually the exact same price. The worst part is that all of the mining will probably go on for the rest of the year or until Ethereum actually goes to proof of stake or until the bullish market comes to an end which again looks to be at the end of 2021 or until Nvidia will be able to produce in enough cards which was a problem even before all of the mining actually started. So in short I wouldn't get my hopes up to get a 30 series GPU currently at a reasonable price point especially this year. Looks like 2020 was a great year for gaming because most of the time we're just spending at home to game with the lockdown and such but now in 2021 it's just a bad year for gaming because there's no GPUs to buy uh, that won't actually cause more than a kidney. The biggest shame is that the Asus Strix is actually a very beautiful card with amazing cooling and is one of the best AIB partner card designs on the market but unfortunately Nvidia dropped the ball down the Grand Canyon with the engineering of the 3060. It makes no sense at all to buy this card even if you could get it for around $330 which is, again is the MSRP. I would much rather spend the extra money and get the Asus Strix 3060 Ti for a ton more performance that will future proof me for much longer as well. So I do apologize to Asus because the Strix card in general is just an amazing card but they just got laid down by Nvidia just too much this time around. And then on that disappointment it's time to end. If you guys enjoyed this review, please like, share, comment, comment like always. If you want to get the card for yourself and if they're stock, I will leave links in the video description. But anyway, I do hope you guys enjoyed and I'll check all of you next time. Cheers guys.